The Dallas Cowboys, along with 31 other teams around the NFL, have cut their rosters down to 53 guys. From 90 that started training camp to 53 on the team's 2023 roster. A lot of change has come in the past few days to a Cowboys team that I think we are all excited to see in less than two weeks. In today's video, I want to talk about what I did and didn't like from the Cowboys 2023 roster cutdowns. So let's not waste any more time and get into the video. The first thing that I really liked was Hunter Lipke making this roster. If you've been following the channel for a while now, you know that I made a video about Hunter Lipke three months ago after the Cowboys signed him as an undrafted free agent. I was really high on the idea that Lipke could be this team's short yardage and third down back. Their hybrid fullback slash halfback that had blocking ability and skills carrying the ball as well. And to be honest, I kind of forgot about him as the Cowboys practices and preseason games went on because we didn't see or hear much about Hunter through the first two preseason games. But that third and final preseason game played him onto this roster. I think he did so well in that game against the Raiders that the Cowboys decided to go back and take a good long look at him being on this roster and what he could be for this team in 2023. And honestly, I love that the Cowboys did. I think that he can be a great short yardage guy, a big body to take Ezekiel Elliott's job in short yardage situations. Overall, I love that Hunter Lipke made the roster. I didn't have him on my 53 just because I wasn't sure that that last preseason game was going to do it for him. But it seems to have left a mark on the Cowboys coaching staff. He's going to be on this team in 2023. The next move that I like from the Cowboys 53-man roster was the Trey Lance trade that had the Cowboys keeping Lance, Rush, and Prescott. I think that there were some mixed emotions about the Lance trade overall. Some people liked the idea of taking a chance on the upside, others thought it was disrespectful to Dak, and some people just think that Trey Lance stinks altogether, and this move was unnecessary. But for me, I liked it. I think it increases the upside that you have at quarterback two and three now and in the future. As much as I like Cooper Rush and you might too, we can all agree that his ceiling as a quarterback is limited. He's not going to win you a game with his arm or athleticism, and he's just an overall limited quarterback that's going to be a game manager and not much more than that. So trading a fourth round pick for a guy that could possibly upgrade those traits is good in my book. At the end of the day, you gave up a fourth round pick for a guy with tremendous upside. If it doesn't work out, it's not a big deal. If it does work out, it's going to be awesome. Next up, we have something that I predicted about two weeks into training camp, and that was Jalen Brooks making the roster over Semi Fajoko for the sixth wide receiver spot. Going into camp, it felt like Fajoko really needed to take it up a notch if he wanted to make the Cowboys roster. And with every week in game that passed, it never felt like he could do that. It never felt like he had good control over that last wide receiver spot. So I'm not surprised to see the Cowboys go with a draft pick that has shown some really good upside in Jalen Brooks. Overall, I liked the idea. If Fehoko hasn't figured it out by year three, he probably won't in this Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott offense. So I think it was time to move on. Fehoko did sign with the Pittsburgh Steelers practice squad. So if you want to keep up with his career, that's where you should be looking. The last thing I like from the Cowboys 53-man roster is Juan Ye Thomas, the 23-year-old undrafted free agent from 2022 making this team. After a great camp and great preseason, it felt like Wanye Thomas was on the fringes of making the roster. It felt like the Cowboys were going to have to work a little bit with the numbers to get him on this team. But he was also a guy that you felt like earned it. That if the Cowboys were really going to try to get somebody on this roster to be their 51st, 52nd, or 53rd player, it was going to be Wanye Thomas. It was awesome to see him make this team after standing out for a majority of practices and preseason games. I really hope that Wanye Thomas shines on this Cowboys defense and he does get a little bit of opportunity to play on such a talented unit. But like we all know, the Cowboys aren't perfect. So there are some things that I didn't like from the Cowboys 53-man roster cutdowns. But before we get into what I didn't like, I like to have sponsorships on my videos that I believe in. That's why I want to tell you guys about the all-new Double Move Sports Memorabilia Store. It is owned by me and it just opened up. Double Move Sports Memorabilia will have high quality stitched 
autographed Dallas Cowboys jerseys, mini helmets, display cases, signed footballs, everything that you could possibly want. You don't have to worry about buying fake autographs. Everything on the website is 100% authenticated through Game Day or Beckett and hand signed by Cowboys players themselves. Jake Ferguson jerseys, Sam Williams, Jalen Tolbert, CeeDee Lamb can all be found on the website. So if you're like me and you love sports memorabilia, the link will be down below in the description or the top comment on this video. All the way up into the Cowboys kickoff against New York, you can get free shipping on all your orders. If you order three jerseys, it will be completely free shipping. So if that's something you're interested in, head to the link down below. Now let's get back into the video. While I like how the Cowboys constructed their roster, there are some moves that I didn't like in return, and that starts with Isaiah Land being lost to the waiver wire. I feel like this one should not make me upset for the simple fact that the Cowboys have plenty of pass rushers on this roster. But Isaiah Land was claimed off of waivers by the Indianapolis Colts after the Cowboys waived him on cut day. Land was claimed, put on the Colts 53-man roster, meaning the Cowboys missed out on a guy that I think was super talented. But the truth is, I don't think that Land would have really gotten any snaps in 2023 along this defensive line or even dressed for the team throughout the season. This article by Inside the Star kind of puts all of this into perspective a little bit for me. The title reads, Dallas sure to lose defensive talent to the waiver wire. And to be honest, that's just kind of the problem. When you are that stacked and talented at one position group, you're probably gonna lose talent to the waiver wire. Guys that are second and third in your rotation could be starters on other defenses. So losing a talented guy like Land, was kind of inevitable. But I still don't like letting go of pass rushers that showed potential and a premium position. And it kind of hurts knowing that the Cowboys just waved him. I thought they could have turned his preseason into a trade piece. The Colts were fourth in the waiver wire and they scooped him up. Land didn't get past four teams, which makes me believe he had some kind of trade value. But that didn't happen and it's a move that I didn't really like. Enough about Land though, next up on the list we have Jabril Cox. And this one's not just about him getting waived. It was one of those that I kind of felt like was going to happen, but I didn't want to believe it. Jabril Cox's entire career with the Cowboys has felt weird. He got injured in his rookie season, we didn't see much of him last year. And then throughout the entirety of training camp, it felt like he was falling behind with guys like DeMarvion Overshone and Damone Clark. He really fell out of favor with this coaching staff, whether that be with Dan Quinn or Mike McCarthy. Jabril Cox's career as a Cowboy just never really got off the ground after his rookie season. He had a really nice play in 2021 on Daniel Jones, but after that, we didn't see or hear much about him, other than him falling behind and getting lost in the shuffle with the Cowboys adding other talented young linebackers. Unfortunately, Jabril Cox felt the same way because after he cleared waivers, he signed with the commander's practice squad instead of coming back to Dallas because the truth is he probably felt like he was never going to get an opportunity on this defense, which was probably true. So Jabril Cox finds himself on this list, not really because they cut him, because his entire career was just odd. Let me know what you thought about Jabril Cox not signing with the Cowboys practice squad and choosing a division rival. Before we wrap up this video, I do have one more move that I'm kind of unsure of and probably doesn't really matter as much as I'm making it out to be, but it is something we need to talk about. Now slot corner Kelvin Joseph was traded to Miami and in return, Dallas got Noah Iggy, which is what I'm saying from now on because I'm going to butcher his last name and then you guys are going to roast me in the comments. Miami got a slot corner in Joseph, Dallas gets an outside corner in a straight up trade. Both of the players included have struggled so far throughout their short careers. Neither guy has really lived up to their draft hype, although that I thought Kelvin Joseph played well enough in camp to make this roster. But I think that Dallas was done with him and just ready to move on. And instead of cutting him, they got a talented guy in Noah in return. Since I can't decide on how I feel about this, comment down below how you feel. Was the Kelvin Joseph trade a good one? Do you agree with my list? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I love you all.